welcome to Tiny Tots Story Time. Our first story today is Wide Awake Bear. Look, the mama bear's asleep, and this little bear can't sleep. Poor little bear. All right. One cold gray day, Elliot's mother called him inside. Time to nap, she said. We'll sleep till spring. Elliot took a final bite of berries and hurried into their den. I miss spring, he said. I do too. I like spring. So he snuggled into his mother's side where he slept and snored and dreamed. Look at that nice little blanket he has. Of golden sunshine, soft grass, and budding flowers, leafy trees, shady resting spots, and fish-filled streams, buzzing bees, just ripened berries, and warm, sweet honey. Bears like honey. When something tickled his nose, Elliot woke with a start. It must be spring. But the world was dark and dreary, and his mother was still snoring. Oh, no, Elliot whispered. I should be sleeping. Hmm. What's a little bear to do when he can't sleep? Oops. Turned too many pages. He lay on his side, his belly, his back. He fluffed the bark strips beneath him and made a plump pine needle pillow. That doesn't sound very soft. <laughs> he imagined basking in a sunbeam and relaxing on a patch of grass, but nothing worked. Elliot was still wide awake. Oh, poor little bear. He saw things he'd never noticed before. Strange shadows on the wall. A dark shape outside. Elliot rushed to his mother and nudged her with his nose. She grunted. He whimpered and whined. She rolled over and sighed. Mother doesn't want to be bothered. Then a gust of wind whirled through the den. Elliot's teeth chattered. His fur stood on end. The shadow shifted and seemed to come even closer. Elliot scampered behind his mother's broad back where he shivered and quivered and hid. Look at him. He's a little bit afraid of the shadows. His mother shook herself awake and scooped him into a big bear hug. What's up, little cub? I didn't sleep till spring, Elliot sobbed. There aren't any blooming flowers, delicious fish, or golden sunbeams, only shadows and shapes, and I'm, I'm, I'm still wide Awake! Feels like I missed a page. No, guess not. <laughs> Elliot's mother showed him how the shadows came from branches. We can make shadows too, she said. So they did. Silly shadows shaped like bees and trees and fish. Elliot wasn't scared anymore. So he curled into a ball and shut his eyes. <coughs> his body was tired, but his mind was <coughs> still wide awake. Where were the flowers and grass and fish? Where was spring? Elliot had to know. 
So he pretended he was a fish and swam past his mother to the den's entrance. He saw piles of snow, patches of ice, and thick clouds. He sighed. Spring isn't anywhere. There's still time to sleep, his mother agreed. But look closer first. Oh, I wonder what mother sees. Elliot did and finally noticed one brave bud. He remembered his dream. That bud would become a flower. Grass waited below the snow. Fish swam under the ice. And the sun shone brightly right behind the clouds. Spring wasn't gone forever. It was just asleep, like a hibernating bear. We have some other things sleeping right now too, don't we? Elliot fluffed his bark chip bed and plumped his pine needle pillow. Then his mother shared one paw full of dried berries and another of cool, sweet honey. After they'd eaten every bit, Elliot couldn't help but yawn. Look, he's stretching and yawning. So he snuggled with his mother, who was warmer than the coziest sunbeam. And together they... slept until spring. <laughs> like we've got a little gopher coming up out of the ground there. That's the end. So the little bear finally did go to sleep. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Lisa, what do you have for us? All right, so the little bear slept till spring, and we have other animals that sleep till spring. Now, when you sleep like that, most of the winter long, that's called hibernation. And so I've got some pictures here to show you of other animals that sleep in the um, winter. So here we have the bears. Most bears sleep um, all winter long, just like the book she read us. Now, not all of these animals live in Indiana, but um, throughout the world, we have animals that like to sleep during the winter. There are prairie dogs. I like to dig little holes and sleep all winter long. Chipmunks. Now, I know at our house we have chipmunks all spring and all summer, but we haven't seen any right now, so they must be hibernating. They are sleeping underground somewhere in a nice little warm, cozy place, ready for spring to come. We have some land snails that do hibernation. They hibernate. They sleep in the, in the, when it's cold. Bats like to sleep when it's cold. Now, bats like to sleep in a cave. So if you have a cave near you, you might be able to go in and see the bats sleeping. This says garter snake. I think most snakes, um, and, and Miss Kim's picture there showed the snake sleeping underground. Little hedgehogs, they like to sleep underground in the winter. Most bees will sleep underground. You don't see bees in the winter, do you? They don't fly away like some birds do and come back. They find a place to sleep in the winter. We have wood frogs and skunks <laughs> and box turtles, and I think also most turtles, not just the box turtles. So these are some of the animals that hibernate or sleep during the winter. If you don't know about these animals, you can come on down to the library. I know we have books about almost all of these animals, and you can read more about them and learn what their habits are and what they like to eat and where they like to sleep and how they hibernate. So pretty cool animals we have in our world. Yeah. All right. Well, we talked about the little bear cub who was wide awake. Now we're going to talk about a tiger. <clears throat> and they're saying, don't wake up the tiger. All right. Now you got to watch the little illustrations or pictures in the book, boys and girls. Don't wake the tiger. because the pictures help tell this story very well. Shh, tiger is fast asleep 
and we shouldn't wake her up. <clears throat> Look at all these animals. We have a turtle, a frog, a mouse, a fox, some kind of bird. I can't tell for sure in that picture. But she's in the way. Whatever will the other animals do? They're in a hurry, and they've got a big bunch of balloons to carry, too. Oh, dear. How will they get past without waking her up? <clears throat> Luckily, Frog has a very good idea. Frog is using his balloon to float over Tiger. Can you help make sure Tiger stays asleep? Shoosh. Let's pet her nose. That always works. So we'll pet the tiger's nose to try to keep him asleep. Oh, good. Tiger is still sound asleep. Now it's Fox's turn. But look, Fox is too heavy for his balloon, and the balloon is dropping lower and lower. Oh, we got to blow. Blow as hard as you can, boys and girls. Blow hard and blow that balloon right over the top of the tiger. <clears throat> Fox made it across. Good job. It's Tortoise's turn now. He looks a bit worried because Tiger is waking up. Ooh, look, he's got one eye open, scratching his ear. Let's pet Tiger's tummy. There. Nice and gentle. That will help her sleep. Yay, Tortoise got across. He couldn't have done it without you. But now it's Mouse's turn, and she's shaking <clears throat> so much that she lets go of her balloon. Oh, no. Oh, no, she's falling right on to Tiger's head. Quick, let's sing a lullaby. And can you rock the book, too? Everyone knows that tigers love to be rocked to sleep. Are you singing a lullaby at home, boys and girls? Ooh, we'll rock that tiger. Let's find out if it works. Phew, that was close, wasn't it? This is a stork. Now I can see it's a stork with his long legs. Stork is the last animal to cross. She can step over Tiger with her long legs. But be careful, stork. Watch out for the balloon. Look, boys and girls. Uh-oh, what might happen? Pop! And look at the tiger. <laughs> Oh, that woke him up for sure. Oh, my goodness. Oh, dear. Tiger is wide awake. That means that it's time for her surprise birthday party. Happy birthday, Tiger. Can you wish her a happy birthday, too, boys and girls? Oh, sing happy birthday to little, little tiger. Yeah, and they've got the cake. I see three candles. You suppose that tiger's three years old? Let's count those set candles. One, two, three. Yeah, that's awfully nice of those friends to do that party for tiger. Yep, that's the end of that story. All that time, I thought they were afraid of that tiger, and they were just doing a birthday party. <laughs> Okay, well, we hope you have fun with the stories today. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.